Hey all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a closer look at the Terriza GK3V Mini PC. This is a budget mini computer running on Windows 10 Pro Edition, and after discounts and coupons applied at checkout, it usually sells for around $200 on Amazon. And for the money, we are getting some better specs than in years past. That includes 8 gigs of built-in DDR4 RAM along with 128 gigs of built-in SSD storage coupled with a quad-core Intel Celeron J4125 processor. Just a year or two ago, mini PCs in the $200 price range came with just 4 gigs of RAM, so now we're getting double, which is great, and true SSD for faster read and write speeds, and has 2.4G and 5G dual-band Wi-Fi built on in along with ventilation ports, and even the ability to further expand on the hard drive or SSD by popping in a second SATA. The up to three monitors can be connected at once and even retains a slightly older VGA style port for older monitors along with two standard HDMI ports. Clock speed of the Celeron processor going up to 2.7 gigahertz at the burst mode. So the brand Terriza might not sound super familiar, but actually this is a sub-brand of the company Ace PC. For example, here is the Ace PC AK1, which has been doing really well, a top seller on Amazon for mini PCs. So this is basically the same company, just under a slightly different brand. In fact, it's still part of that same series, which they call the Slice mini computers. So inside of the box, we have, of course, the mini PC itself that we'll take a closer look at in a moment. There's also the charger, which is using a barrel plug for the connection. Would perhaps like to see USB Type-C for power supply in the future, but for this price range, it still is acceptable. And we also have a HDMI cable that's included in the box as well, and a quick start guide. Design of the mini PC itself looks quite sleek, more expensive I'd say than the price here would imply, although the chassis and shell is constructed entirely out of plastic as opposed to metal or aluminum. So that's one area where they can cut costs a little bit to pack in slightly better specs on the inside, like a slightly faster processor and more RAM and SSD than some of the other models that we've seen recently at this price. Now there are some heat sinks, ventilation on the sides that will prevent it from overheating. There is a fan in this model, so it's not completely silent. We have the Celeron sticker and then on the edge here we have the aforementioned power key, micro SD card slot, and then two USB 3.0 ports, a USB 2.0 port, and then on the back here we have another USB port, so up to four USB connections. There's also the dual HDMI ports supplying up to 4K UHD output, power supply, 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port, and Ethernet if you don't want to use Wi-Fi. On the other side there's just the VGA port retaining this function for older monitors, which is great. The only thing that's missing, I would say, would be, again, a USB Type-C port, whether it's for power or for data or for display, would be really nice to see here in 2021. But everything else, plenty of I.O. on this box. Now, on the base here, we have, again, some ventilation ports and soft-touch rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or a desk. Now, if you want to upgrade the SSD by taking out a screw here and then also pulling on this tap, it will then pop open like so, and underneath this lid is where we can then pop in the second hard drive. There's a bit of a tape here, but this is just where you would pop it in. So the design is expandable and everything is still enclosed inside, which is pretty neat. We also have this crazy chrome accent going on. It's still plastic, but definitely adds a bit of a shine. Finally, there is also a LED light on the front that will glow blue when the machine is turned on. So let's take a closer look at the performance. Booting up the mini PC takes just around 20 seconds, so fairly fast thanks to the SSD that they have, and we are greeted to just a very clean install of Windows 10 Pro Edition. As far as the built-in memory is concerned, out of the 128 gigs. The operating system takes up a chunk, so you have roughly 88 gigs remaining to install your favorite games and applications, which again you can further expand and again 8 gigs of RAM along with the Celeron J4125 processor. A few remarks here being that the Wi-Fi reception quality seems to be solid. I was consistently getting around 3 to 4 bars, even though I'm a little bit further away from my Wi-Fi router at the moment, so didn't really encounter too many issues when it comes to staying connected and refreshing pages relatively quickly. So in fact, if we do a quick test here and try to visit a website, 
Let's just search The Verge and see how quickly it will load up. So pretty fast, as you can see there. It will, of course, render the desktop version of the site. This is a complex page that has plenty of videos and ads, and it will just take a split second for everything to load. The 8 gigs of RAM also allows us to do plenty of multitasking, so I'm able to open up at least 10 tabs in the browser. It doesn't feel like it's slowing down, and the pages are still retained in the RAM. So I can jump back and forth between these tabs, as you can see, and nothing is reloading. In terms of the specs, we take a closer look at the pass mark score. The J4125 Celeron chip has a CPU score of about 3042. But budget processors have come a long way over the past few years, and this chip came out in quarter one of 2020, making it just around a year old, so it's actually not too out of date either compared to some other mini PCs that are still using chipsets from a few years back. Other common chipsets include the Celeron. N3450 has a pass mark score of 1,926, so we are getting a boost here of around 1,000 points higher. So that is a pretty significant bump when it comes to loading times and opening up applications. You'll definitely feel like this computer is just a tad faster. J3455 is another popular chipset in some of the uh, other mini PCs we've checked out, and this one has a 2,273 score, one of the highest scores yet out of the Celeron series of Intel chips. In particular, you can do things like watch back YouTube videos or even local files up to the aforementioned 4K resolution, and that can be handled really without any issues, so we can play it back. It is using integrated uh, Intel graphics, but Everything is still very smooth, even though we are playing back an Ultra HD video. And uh, same thing goes with the internet. Again, the Wi-Fi reception speed is quite fast, so it doesn't take too long to buffer between parts of the video. Everything is playing back smoothly and without really any delay, so actually doing a very good job. You can hear that in the background, the fan of the mini PC occasionally kicks in and that's how loud it is. It's not too bad, uh, and overall the temperature of the mini PC also remains pretty cool. I would say never gets too hot. The Celeron chips have always been fairly energy efficient, and again here is the LED light on the side here that is also illuminated. You can run complicated Excel documents, PowerPoints, spreadsheets, Word docs, and that can all be handled gracefully. Even ones which have more cells and rows, you can still uh, do just fine on this machine for some light business work without too much issues here, and uh, overall pretty consistent performance in that regard. You can also rely on third-party programs like Open Office or Google Docs. When it comes to gaming and other applications, you can find plenty of options in the Microsoft Store, or since this is a legacy Windows operating system, you're able to install any executables, exe programs from the internet you can simply install, such as Candy Crush, Roblox, Minecraft can all be installed and work without any complaints. Uh, we've seen it work well even on less powerful machines, so it's no exception here, but ultimately it's not a gaming machine, so you shouldn't expect it to run, say, AAA titles like Cyberpunk, for instance, or Flight Simulator. For those, though, you can also rely on some cloud-based services to still make it playable. For example, uh, Google's Stadia or xCloud from Microsoft. Those are basically cloud-based subscriptions where the game is running on more powerful hardware and CPU on the servers from Google or Microsoft and you're just streaming it and so your machine just needs to have a good internet connection. Generally speaking, I wouldn't say this is going to be my best recommendation for a kind of video editing machine doable if you have to do something in a pinch or if you're editing files in 720p or full HD, uh, but again it's not really designed for super heavy video editing. But lighter tasks like Photoshop, touching up some images, things like that can definitely still be performed on this machine. Doing all all right, so that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Teriza GK3V mini PC. Again, for the price point here of around 200 bucks, it definitely is a incremental improvement compared to other machines we've seen in the past around this range. This one here just having a slightly faster processor, up-to-date components including an SSD as well as 8 gigs of RAM that will allow you to do more multitasking, open up more windows in the browser without really noticing things slowing down, and quick for applications to generally open. So you can check out more details if you're interested in a pretty solid, affordable mini PC overall. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.